sir. Thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Thank you. Thank you both. On the outside in this room behind the Penn State helmet. <laughs> there you go. Thank you both for joining us. Is this working? Is it? Okay. Um, take just a quick couple of seconds to welcome our distinguished guest, Coach McClendon. Coach Franklin, thank you both for being here. We're excited about the opportunity for the 71st annual bowl game to be played here, to have these two great teams. Uh, obviously, you've only played one time in the history, so that makes it a kind of a history-making event, uh, and it was for the national championship. So we're not crowning national championships this year, but we're going to crown a champion of the, of the bowl. So we're very excited. I want to take just a couple quick seconds to introduce some people in the audience. Uh, our chairman, Heather Duncan, chairman. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank the you. chairman of our sports council, Carl Cannon, and then representatives from the taxlayer.com uh, people. So we appreciate y'all being here very much. David, thank you, both of you, for being here. We're excited about uh, having the 71st game, and thank you for your sponsorship, Stephen. It's been great, and we're uh, appreciative of everything that you do and everything your company does for us. So thanks for both of you being here. Um, we're going to do this, we're going to talk just a little bit, and then we'll let the media ask some questions, and then we'll let the general audience have, have a few questions before we uh, get out of here and go to the luncheon. So, good year. Played very, great. Very good year. And, and, and want to take a moment to thank you uh, for this opportunity. I um, want to thank TaxLayer.com. Uh, just our players are ecstatic about being here. Uh, such a great bowl game, such a great venue in the city. Um, and then obviously the history with Georgia. Um, you know, I think uh, you know our fans are really, really excited um, to play a program you know like Georgia, and um, you know it's, it's just it's just a great opportunity. So we're very, very appreciative of the opportunity. I appreciate you wearing your variations of blue, your Penn State blue. I question your tie choice, sir. Um, but yeah, we're we're very excited about being here. Coach, I got to tell you, we're so excited about having the Big Ten in our game, and we had Iowa last year, and now to have an opportunity with a history and tradition of Penn State. Uh, we actually talked about it in the office when we were, when we were going through the selection. We, we think we've got the best two uniforms in college football, for sure, your traditional beautiful uniforms. And we, we're very impressed and very proud to have your program here. So thank you. We're, we're, we, we couldn't be more excited. Um, obviously, um, Penn State's a special place, has been for a very long time. Our fans are very passionate. I'm familiar with the conference that Coach comes from, um, and I think you know our Penn State fans. Um, they're going to bring passion. You know, they're going to bring excitement, and they're going to be excited about playing. Uh, you know, uh, unbelievable program like Georgia. Great, thanks, Coach Mack. Yep. Head coach. Yep. Interim. Yes, sir. Well, we're glad to have you, and we're very excited to have the University of Georgia playing our game. And again, you know, I saw some of the ESPN people pick this one as the best helmet in college football. So. We're very impressed. You play here every year, and, and we're, uh, we enjoy very much um, the neutral site game that you play here, but it's always a very big pleasure to have your team come back and an opportunity to win 10 games, um, finish second in the, in the East, and had a great year, and we're looking forward to continuing that year here in Jacksonville. So I'll let you say a few words. Absolutely. Well, uh, first, again, uh, just want to thank you guys for having us. Um, I tell you what, uh, I mean, just the opportunity to be able to play in a bowl game uh, and then be able to come back down here to Jacksonville to be able to play in the Tax Slayer Bowl game. I think everybody was kind of excited. Everybody was, uh, you know, ecstatic, obviously, about playing against Penn State. Uh, you know, you, you look at these bowls and then you try to try to see, okay, you know, what games are really going to be exciting, you know, and, and there's no doubt that we feel like this one is. Uh, and uh, just the tradition of the both both schools, you know. I mean, uh, just like just like you mentioned, Rick. You know, but the first time that we played was, I mean, the first time that each team played was uh, in a national championship. And then you know, get a chance to come back down here and follow up with the national championship game. You know, between those meetings, I think everybody is going to kind of have everybody excited a little bit as well. But again, just going back to thank you all. Uh, you know, we're we're ecstatic about being here. Uh, ecstatic about to get uh, again to get a chance to play against a great tradition, a uh, great team, and I um, mean, and, and we know, you know, obviously Coach Franklin, he's he's very familiar with us, uh, and and you know, just you know, the job that he did, you know, not only that he's doing now, but the job he did at Vanderbilt, you know, and and, and that conference was, uh, you know, was almost second to none. It really was, and so, uh, but we're we're excited about being here, and 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 uh, look forward to that week and, and the game. Coach, you've been there two years. 
it's starting to come up. You can sure tell the difference in, in players. I, I noticed that you said at the press conference about the scholarship limitations. I think you're finally getting through with those this year, and, and now you'll have a full contingent. How do you see the future of your program? Well, it, it's very bright. Um, you know, first of all, I, I want to thank our, our seniors. Uh, our seniors are, are a special group of guys that will be remembered at Penn State forever. Um, you think about all the things that those guys have been through in five years. Uh, I'm the fifth head coach in 27 months there. Um, uh, you think about all the things that our, our seniors have been through and how they have flourished academically, how they've made an unbelievable impact in the community, and how um, you know we're in a position we're going to be going to bowl games two years in a row after going through some really trying situations. So these guys will be remembered forever at Penn State, and um, you know, I think a guy that's a, that's a great example of that, uh, you know, Carl Nassib, um, our, our All-American defensive end, who started out as a walk-on at Penn State, um, is, is winning a bunch of awards right now. Won the award last night, the Lombardi Award. So um, I think he's just a great example of our players, how they've kept the great attitude, how they've persevered, and how they've been very appreciative of the opportunity they've had at Penn State. So um, bright things in our future. And um, you know, we're looking at this game as an opportunity to um, go out and compete against a great opponent, but hopefully uh, propel us into a, to a great offseason and, and a great season next year. You know, it really is about the kids. You know, they, they, what they go through and what they sacrifice and how hard they work and everything. And then we kind of get the clutter that kind of gets in the way with all that other stuff that's out there. But the one thing that I, I do know about your program is that your kids have stuck together. They've gone through a, a coaching change, a transition sure. as, as they go through it. Um, but you've got some kids that are also seniors that have – done an unbelievable job while they were at the University of Georgia. And I'll let you talk a little bit Absolutely. about that. Absolutely. I mean, our, our seniors have a chance to win their 40th game at the University of Georgia, which um, is, is especially in today's society of, of college football and today's culture of college football, it's not very easy to do, especially in the league that we play in and, and the competition that we play against. But, uh, but those guys, you know, and not, not so much those guys, but just everybody in general in the building um, has done a great job with kind of everything that's going on, everything that's going on even during the season uh, when Coach Rick was still there. Um, but of, of, of making it about those kids and, uh, and making sure that everybody did a great job of understanding that, you know, that those guys are the people that matter. And, and, and as long as you make it right for them, then kind of everything else will kind of fall in line. And, um, and, and I mean, very, very similar to the situation that I know Coach had to walk into up there at Penn State. I mean, it's not easy. Uh, it's, not, it's not easy to kind of deal with all, like you said, all the clutter. But I think if, you know, one of the things that we talk about is keeping the main thing the main thing. And if you keep the main thing the main thing, then all the other things kind of fall into place. So, uh, but those seniors, they, they've done a tremendous job of uh, fighting through, pushing through. Uh, you know, those guys know what it takes to be successful. And, um, and and do a great job of holding people accountable, which is which is half of it. It really does. It really makes our jobs a little bit easier as coaches. Well, we know that we've got uh, clearly two of the best conferences, two good, great teams playing in our bowl game. But we do have a little bit of extra riding on this game, if you guys had not been told. The state of Florida is proud to host three Big Ten SEC matchups. So I think the nation will be kind of looking at that and seeing which one of these two conferences comes out ahead. We did that about five years ago to set this up so that we'd have the ability to do that. So just don't forget, you're playing for Penn State or Georgia, but you're also working hard for your conference. And so we're glad to have both of you here and your, both of your conferences represented. So with that, I would give an opportunity for the media to ask any questions. Uh, I know that Gary's going to have some. Gary Smith from the Florida Times Union. Gary? Uh, tradition, uh, tradition, very hard nose, um, guys that always, uh, are going to keep playing, you know, whether they're down by 50 or, you know, or up by 50. Uh, I mean, those guys just continuously play hard, very, very sound fundamentally. Um, and, and you think about, you know, guys that have to push through, that had to push through a bunch of the clutter, like we talked about and, and which is, which makes a team very mentally tough, uh, and teams that are mentally tough are hard to beat. Uh, because, you know, no matter what, the, you know, that to them they're never down enough, uh, and, and no matter what, they always have a chance. So that's what the first thing that, that strikes us when you, when you think about Penn State. Coach Franklin, you had the personal experience of going against George also. Uh, with that perspective, and then just the knowing college football like you do, what's the first thing that comes to mind when somebody tells you Georgia football? 
I think a tradition of excellence, number one. Um, the other thing that jumps into my mind is Herschel Walker, and I'm glad he won't be playing in the game. Uh, although we were just talking, it, it seems like the University of Georgia goes out and recruits the best running back in the country year after year. And I always say that there's no way they're going to sign another one. And, and coach and their staff will go out and, and find another great player. But um, great players, um, you know, tradition of excellence both on and off the field. Uh, consistency. I think that's one of the other things that you know I think of when I think of Georgia. The consistency in their uniform. Um, we have the best helmet in college football. Um, but uh, you know the consistency in their uniform. They don't need to change. You, know, you see that G. Everybody knows what it is. You see the white helmet with the stripe. You know what that is. Um, and, and I think you know one of the things I'm really looking forward to is our staff being able to spend some time with, with coaches' staff and get to know those guys, and then our players. Uh, we got a bunch of special guys, um, and I think one of the great things about college football is not only competing on the field, but also building relationships. And our players will be at events with the Georgia players and getting to know those guys a little bit better. Um, there's some guys um, that are on Georgia's program that, that we recruited and uh, lost out to Georgia, so I'll look forward to seeing those guys as well. Um, but you know, to me, the whole experience, bowl games are great because of the whole, whole experience, how the communities kind of rally around the teams that are coming in. And for our players to be able to experience something maybe they haven't experienced before, Jacksonville and the community. So really looking forward to that. That's great. Gary, you got any more? Uh, actually, I just had one more. The guy wants me to use the mic. We can hear you. Just very briefly, uh, uh, is defense going to be an important part of this game? Do you think this game has the potential to be a defensive struggle? Ask both of you. No, defense won't be important this game at all. <laughs> Never is. Yeah. But do, you think, do you think it will be a defensive type game? Yeah, I think if, if you look at at our defensive numbers um, and the things that we've been able to do and the fact we talked about Carl Nassib, we didn't have um, our starting defensive end, Carl, for the last three games of the year. Coach was coach was joking, saying, you know, he doesn't need to play this game either. Um, but I think that'll factor. We've played really good, I you know, and I expect they're going to as well. They've done that all year long. So I actually think the opposite. I think, you know, I think you can take, for granted that the defenses are going to are going to play well, it's going to be special teams and it's going to be offense finding ways to make plays um, and and try to get some points on the board. Uh, same, uh, I think you know in any good team uh, you got to have a defense, very good defense, and you got and and then you know not not so much that, but you know those guys you know they got a Lombardi Award winner, then they got a first round quarterback, you know, and then they got a freshman running back who's dynamite too. So. Uh, I mean, you know, just a team is, you know, well-rounded as those guys, you know, good players. Obviously, like I said, you know, that allows those guys to be very, very solid in, in, in the kicking teams as well. Um, I think all that stuff is important. You know, all that stuff is going to go into it. But definitely defense is going to be an important part of the game. Any other member of the media? Yes, sir. Thanks. Uh, Rob Riva, fightonstate.com. Uh, Coach Franklin. Um, it's been a while since Penn State has been in Jacksonville for a bowl game, but there's certainly a lot of history with the predecessor bowl, the Gator Bowl, and, and Penn State. It was Coach Paterno's uh, first bowl game coach as head coach in 1967. What does the history of this bowl game and Penn State mean for the team and for you uh, and in, in preparation for, for the game on January 2nd? You know, I, I think history is important. Uh, we're aware of history. We study history. Um, and I think if you look at Penn State with the amount of success that we've had in really both programs, um, you know, this bowl obviously is special to us. Um, but for us, you know, our focus is on the present um, and making sure our players, you know, finish this semester really strong academically and then come down here and prepare like crazy to go out and play well. Um, history is important. Um, but you know we're focused on on today and and finding a way to maximize each day um, you know in terms of our preparation for this game and finishing up with recruiting as well um, so that we can come down here and play the game the way it's supposed to be played blue collar hard nose have some fun with some passion and excitement and fly around um, you know, one of the things we talk to our players all the time about is I think football is different than a lot of sports where um, you know, after this bowl game, there's going to be a large percentage of our players that will never play again. And um, we only have so much time together as a family. And to me, that's what's special about bowl games. It keeps your family together for a few more months. 
So I want our guys to go out and enjoy practice and play hard. I want them to enjoy all the events. I want them to not take for granted the time that we spend in the meeting rooms together and all those types of things because uh, um, you know, this is what makes football special is, is not only the time you spend together but also that it's fleeting. Um, you know, you, you, you stop playing and, uh, you, you, you know, you don't play again. And a very, very small percentage of these guys will go on to the NFL. So um, I want to make sure our guys have, just have a great experience from top to bottom, enjoy, um, you know, the Tax Layer Bowl and enjoy competing against a great program like the University of Georgia um, so that these guys can, can feel good about what they accomplished here with their experience at Penn State. Any more questions from the media? Okay, we'll take a couple of questions from the audience. Stephen? Both coaches, uh, as you guys have plenty of powerhouses and there's great talent from many conferences and teams, how do you look as you build Jerry McCoy's coach and obviously look, look at the future as well, try and get to that next level where you're truly competing for a national championship again, talent, obviously some lost greats, but it's so hard these days. How does a coach be able to maintain the openness to the idea of saying, Penn State, I'm sure will play you know, Georgia how do you kind of go to that next level and say, okay, we can truly compete for a national championship and just really play every game? Yeah, you know, I, I think it starts by studying programs that have, that have been successful, studying Penn State, study a lot of the programs across the country that have been successful. I think consistency on your coaching staff is really, really important. Um, I think getting everybody aligned. If you look at, you know, no different in college football than any other organization, it's making sure that the president, the AD, the head football coach, um, the administration, um, um, the board, um, everybody's pulling the rope in the same direction. Uh, everybody understands the plan, everybody understands the vision, and everybody's working together to provide an unbelievable experience for our student athletes. Um, it's development. It's, it's professional development of your staff. It's, it's development of your players, uh, academically, athletically, socially, spiritually, the whole package. Um, and then it's, and then it's about, it's about, you know, finding ways to be successful. You know, everybody focuses on the results, you know, of what happens on Saturday on the field or what happens Friday in the classroom with the exam, but it's about the preparation ahead of time, you know, so, um, all those things are important. And the, and the funny thing about being a, a college football coach, every single one of those areas is important and you can't overlook one. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that we know is important is, is going out and recruiting the right people on the front end. Um, not only good players, but good people and great students um, that want to that wanna truly get an education, uh, the whole package. Because it's amazing, um, you know, it's amazing how this works, but good people that are really good football players, the plays seem to work better. When you when you have those guys, it just it just it just works out that way, and we're fortunate. We have some really really good players at Penn State and good people. And we just want to continue building on that. Uh, I don't want to get into kind of repeating a lot of the same thing that Coach said, uh, but I do think all of those things are important. Uh, the 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 one thing that um, you know I'll just kind of highlight some things that he said. You know, just to answer the question, but uh, you know, definitely the one one thing is going to be recruiting. You know, you you, you got it. You have to do a great job in the evaluation process, and like you said, make sure guys are made up the right way. Um, and today's society, and I know you know me and Coach can probably have a three-hour conversation on this. It is so easy for kids to kind of come into college now with skewed, with, with skewed views of what success is, and 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 even why they play a team sport of football because everything is kind of made about them getting into that get get until the time that they get into school. So, you know, you have to tell them, hey, that you gotta kinda break this mold of what society has has become of, hey, it's all about me and now it's about the guys next to me and, and how their success is should be more important to me than my my success is. And so I think, you know, the the minute that you get guys kinda everybody pulling in that direction from the administration down, that's when I think special things happen um and so and i know coach kind of said 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 all that in, in, in another way but you know that would that would i would say i would kind of highlight the biggest thing about that any other questions 
Okay, well, we're going to let the media have one-on-ones, if that's okay with you guys, for just a few minutes before we head down to the luncheon. And again, I want to thank you for bringing your programs to our city, and I will assure you that the red carpet will be rolled out and that our volunteers are so excited about having your two programs here, and uh, we just embrace you and are glad you're here, and good luck in the game, and enjoy Christmas, and we'll see you back here uh, probably around the 28th or 29th, and we look forward to having an opportunity to meet your players too because we've heard a lot of great things about your players. Your, your success and graduation rates are, are both something to be very proud of. So um, thanks, Coach, for being here. Thank you so Coach, much for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank yes, you. Sir.